If Muhammad was a prophet from God, why did he keep idols in his house? Muslims are commanded to stay away from idols, so Muhammad cannot be the best example for all of mankind. Today, we are going to talk about the fact that the Prophet of Islam, who supposedly is a warner, someone that Allah sent to guide mankind to himself, meaning to Allah, uh, to uh, Jannah, uh, to paradise, uh, allegedly came to basically fight against idolatry. But what if we prove to you that the very man that Allah picked for himself to fight idolatry used to have idols even after he was called to be a prophet. With that in mind, I want to turn our attention now to our dear brother. Brother Rob, uh, welcome back. Thank you, dear brother. Thank you for inviting me again to do another topic, a damaging topic actually today, uh, regarding the worship of idol by the final prophet, uh, the best of example, the seal of all the prophets, Muhammad, as the Muslims claimed for the last 1400 years. Uh, okay, the topic again is Muhammad keeping idols inside of his house and even Allah needs to remind him, yeah, Muhammad, stop worshipping idols. And as you see here on the screen, uh, this is chapter 74, ayah 5. Chapter 74, ayah 5, it says, وَالرُّجْسَ fahjur." In context, Allah is saying to Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad, stop worshipping idols. And here is the proof. On the next slide, if we look at chapter 74, Al-Muddathir, chronological order, chronological order is that this chapter is the fourth chapter supposedly that Muhammad received from Allah. And the one million dollar question is, why in the fourth chapter, which is chapter 74, Allah needs to remind Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, stop worshipping idols. Should it not Muhammad understood from the very first chapter already that he should never ever worship idols yep. and not commit shirk? And here's the proof. Ya ayyuhal muddathir, O the cloaked one, or, or maybe, uh, or, uh, or basically, O uh, the one who puts a robe or a garment on him. In context, it's about Muhammad. Many Muslims confuse this uh, chapter that it's about them. No, it's about Muhammad. And this translator was nice enough to put the name of Muhammad as you see here. So it's about Muhammad. So Allah says to Muhammad, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, Tum fa'undir, rise up and warn, wa rabbaka fakabbir, meaning say takbir, right? Say takbir. And ayah 4, wa thiyabaka fatahir, and keep your clothes clean. Maybe ask Aisha to, you know, close, uh, you know, keep your clothes clean or maybe scratch the semen off your clothes and the last ayah warrujsa fahjur and ya muhammad again muhammad allah saying to muhammad and stay away from idols stay away from idols now if we go to any tafsir let's say we go to the cram de la cram himself al-tabari the one of the most earliest tafsir books by al-tabari al-mufassir al-tabari we see that it's truly about Muhammad. Look, Tafsir al-Tabari for the same chapter, chapter 74, Surah al-Muddathir, Ayah 5. Man al-Kalam, what does al-Rujsa fahjur? Man al-Kalam, meaning the meaning of the verse or the meaning of the words. Wal awthan fahjur ibadatiha watruk khidmatiha, meaning, and Ya Muhammad, as we showed you, it's about Muhammad, and stop worshipping idols, Ya Muhammad, and abandon their service. And that's so very why damaging. in the yeah that's and why, very damaging, why brother he is still serving exactly. idols. Yes. Well this is the fourth chapter again remind yourself this is the fourth chapter that Allah sent supposedly through Jibreel to Muhammad and still Allah needs to warn Muhammad Ya Muhammad please please for the love of my shin stop worshiping idols. Why are you being a mushrik while well, I already sent you down the Quran? This right. is the fourth chapter, brother. And Isn't me, this damaging for any Muslim? Absolutely. And let me say this, brother. This in and of itself is damaging to the fact that Muhammad himself didn't even believe he was a prophet. If he believed he was a prophet, why would he continue with this form of worship? 
worshiping idols and serving them, meaning presenting probably sacrifices to them, doing whatever it takes to serve them. If he was buying it, that he was a prophet, why in the world would Allah have to send him a fourth chapter or a fourth, basically, uh, revelation to at least remind him that he should abandon these things? Exactly, exactly. I mean, uh, should this not be, again, as we mentioned in an earlier video, should this not be the walking, talking, divine revelation of Allah himself, Muhammad? I mean, doesn't, doesn't the Quran in Surah Al-Najm said uh, that uh, Muhammad does not get anything from himself. Everything that he speaks is divine revelation from Allah. So why is Allah not reminding Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, you from the very first chapter, right? That Let's say when he received in uh, Kaif Hira, Muhammad was told that you are a prophet. You are a prophet. And uh, Jibreel squeezed him. Muhammad should have already un understood, hey, there's only one God and I should stop worshipping idols. But still in the fourth chapter, in this very chapter, Muhammad is still worshipping idols. And here is more. Brother, you want to add something on top of this? Like I said, brother, I mean, it's it's damaging in and of itself. By the way, this is why Muslims will tell you Al-Muzammil and Al-Mudathir, I think it's 72 and 74, they want to claim that those were uh, came first. Now they want to abandon the idea that 96 was the first revelation. Why? Because it's embarrassing. It is absolutely exactly. embarrassing to see what's going on here. Exactly, exactly. And here is more proof, my friends. Here is a book by the, the Imam Abu Hanifa, right? The Imam Abu Hanifa, one of the founders of the four uh, madhabs. Abu Hanifa, in his Musnad Abu Hanifa, in Musnad al-Imam al-Azim, by Imam Abu Hanifa, the founder of the Hanafi uh, Sunni school, that Abu Hanifa, in his book, we can see on page 589, the following damaging hadith. And he's one it of the followers. Here, he's one of the tabi'een, yeah. by the way. Exactly. Brother, uh, since uh, Muslims claim that we do not know Arabic, would you be so kind to read uh, the words that are highlighted, brother, uh, all the way to the last part? In the yeah, Arabic? the word that, that is underlined here, uh, reported uh, from Abu Hanifa, basically, and it says, Innahu كان علق في بيت رسول الله سترا فيه تماثيل. So what does uh, that mean, brother? People, you'll see the English there. There was a yeah. curtain, basically a curtain wall in the house of the Prophet of Allah, which there was in it statues, meaning idols on it. Then it says فأبطأ جبريل. So جبريل stayed away, meaning slowed down on coming down to Muhammad and giving him revelations. Then, after that, he came back and said to Muhammad, uh, meaning Muhammad is asking, Why did you slow down? What made you stay away from me? Not bring in revelations, technically. Here is the second line that has an underline under it. This is Jibreel is saying, We do not enter a house that has a dog, and also have statues in it. So if you're a dog lover out there, I'm sorry, G Gabriel is not going to enter your house. Good for you. Go ahead, brother. Exactly. So brother, please remind me again, because maybe we forgot the following uh, thing. Muhammad is already a prophet, and he does not understand, even when he's div uh, getting divine revelation, and Jibreel continuously coming to him, still Muhammad doesn't understand that he cannot keep idols in his house, images and idols in his house. That's what right. What kind of prophet this is? How is this the best example for mankind to follow? Ya yeah, Muslimin. He, he was slow in why, understanding, I guess. Yeah. Why would, why would the final prophet, after receiving so many chapters and so many ayahs and verses in the Quran, still is, he is keeping statues, idols, images inside his house. This is damaging. And Muslims dare to say, well, Muhammad uh, uh, never committed shirk. I think, brother, you know, I think that Muhammad loved fine art. This is why, you know, Muslims want to convince us that Muhammad was having uh, images inside his house, tamathil and images, right? And then look how Gabriel, 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and brother, look what Gabriel's answer was. He didn't say destroy the idols. He said just cut their heads. I mean, again, this is a typical Islamic uh, way of handling problems, cutting heads. Yeah. But uh, in other words, it's okay to leave the body, you know, but just cut the head. Really? I mean, is that what it is? So what about the body? It's not still a statue that you can worship? Exactly. Now, for the Muslims who say, you know, uh, uh, you know, Imam Abu Hanifa is a is a munafiq. He's a, oh yeah, of course. You know, he's a, you know he's ahlul bid'ah. You know, what about the following hadith? Maybe you know Abu Hanifa did not know what he was talking about. Here is another hadith. This is Sunan Abi Daud, as you see, Sunan Abi Daud, hadith number forty one fifty eight. We can read narrated Abu Huraira, the messenger of Allah said. Jibreel, there's nothing called Gabriel, it's Jibreel. Jibreel came to me and said, I came to you last night and was prevented from entering basically his house, entering the house, simply because there were images at the door. And the word again in the Arabic is tamathil. So Muhammad used to keep tamathil, images or statues, at the door. For there was a decorated curtain with images on it also inside the house. Brother. Yeah, you was, see, over I mean, and well, over, Muhammad was fully decorated uh, prophet. That's for sure. We can say that yeah. much. Yeah, brother, I'm fully convinced that Muhammad was not a mushrik. He simply loved fine art. He loved to be a, a collector of art. This is why he was having statues, idols, and images in his house. Right, brother. That That's is what true. The I, mean, I, I did talk about this in one of the other uh, previous shows related to the fact that Muhammad did keep idols. And also they were idols made out of Muhammad himself. I mean, that Muslims also had in their homes up until almost the 12th century. Exactly. And we already showed you, right, from chapter 74, that Muhammad still is getting warnings from Allah. Ya Muhammad, stop committing shirk. Stop worshipping idols. Stay away from idols. Right? Uh, stop worshipping idols, uh, yeah, Muhammad. And Muhammad's still not getting, he's, he's not getting the, the, the message. This is damaging for, to Absolutely. claim, to call him the final prophet, yeah, Muslim. Please stay away from Islam. Drop Muhammad the Mushrik and come back home to your Lord and my Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you so much because our Lord actually did not come to uh, basically um, endorse the worship of idols. He came to restore our broken relationship with God. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one goes to heaven, basically, except through him. So that's why we invite you, our Muslim friends, to come home, come to Jesus. Thank you, brother. And brother, I want, thank you. I want to add one thing before we uh, close this video. Yes, In chapter four, Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 48, just to make things clear, Allah, made it clear indeed allah said allah does not forgive shirk association with him Absolutely. but he forgives what is less than that so meaning if we add one plus one muhammad was a mushrik he kept idols in his hide his house allah needs to continuously reminding him yeah muhammad stop worshiping idols yet allah here in chapter 4 ayah 48 clearly states that he does not forgive any shirk does that mean brother that Muhammad himself is now, as we speak, in hellfire, according to the logic of the Quran? Absolutely, and no wonder Muhammad in chapter 46, verse 9, wasn't so sure what's going to be done to him because he wasn't even convinced that he's saved. Amen. All right. Thank you, Amen, my brother. brother. Thank you, everyone. Um, hope to see you again in yet another one of those short videos about another damaging topic related to either Muhammad, Allah, or Islam in general. This is Al Fadi over and out. God bless you. Take care. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sira International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.